and you know the great Harry Carey is above us right now, screaming, holy cow, Cubs win, Cubs win, Cubs win. How about doing it here, father, son, getting to witness it together? It's priceless. It is priceless. And now, sports with Louis Del Rio. Today, the man known for his peanut punch is punching in for the last time and could very well be punching his ticket to the Hall of Fame. It's fitting that it's Halloween night because the thought of this defense going up against Jay Cutler tonight is just downright spooky. Fox Champagne Sports Director Louis Del Rio has more on tonight's top story. Louis. The heart of the Illini Athletic Department is finally in place and he has a whole lot of orange and blue running through his veins. Just to give you an idea of how big this sneak peek is, I was even willing to wear a hard hat and mess up my hair. It's November 12th, and after everything the Illini have been through so far this season, six losses, three of them by blowout, injuries all over the field, and they've had to turn to a third string sophomore quarterback. Still today, the Illini have a chance at a bowl game. He's even smart enough to recognize different faces and gestures as Louie is dancing behind the cameras <laughs> there. All right, Louie, you're going to start your stuff now that you're in front of the camera. Woo! <laughs> like Mooma. There you go. There you go. Floyd was considered the biggest boom or bust in this year's draft, but with Ryan Pace moving up two spots to get him, obviously he sees boom written all over. No one is exempt. Everyone has their own weaknesses. They just can't seem to overcome. Superman has his kryptonite. America has Kim Kardashian. I have Diet Coke and the Pittsburgh Pirates have Jake Arrieta. Then Matt Joyce, I don't want to be a pirate. And if the Cubs win the World Series, it'll be the greatest thing since sliced bread. And well, that's because sliced bread also didn't exist back in 1945. What channel was the World Series on in 1945? Two? Well, NBC. Five, I was gonna say. Had, I was gonna say that the network is probably what I was looking for. You figure if you use all the networks, you might get it right. <laughs> yeah. The only problem is, is the World Series wasn't televised in 1945. Oh, as the fans, as they were coming into the arena tonight here at the United Center, were given these rally towels, one goal. And of course, that goal is to get back to the Stanley Cup final. The Illini have yet to win a game in the Big Ten, and they've lost four in a row. But you know what the surefire cure is for any losing streak? Rutgers. So for the Nittany Lions, nine straight wins, an outright Big Ten title, and a win over Ohio State. Now the question becomes, is it enough to get in the college playoff? Six, you led them to a Super Bowl. So kids here in the state, mostly Bears fans, have watched you, have watched those teams growing up. How important is that pedigree in recruiting? I think it's very important. Bears defense gave up an opening drive touchdown. So not the start Bears fans wanted to get off to, but they're already putting themselves in a better mood as one Bears fan yelled out as he was walking out of Soldier Field tonight. He said, hey, we still have the Cubs. And the Preds brought Smashville to Chicago tonight, crushing the Blackhawks 5 to nothing to take a commanding 2-0 series lead. Okay. All 32 NFL GMs are watching right now. Why should they take a chance and draft you? I am a great player. Um, Wild wow, man, just knows wild wow, man coming. <laughs> that moment he said he knew he wanted to be a basketball player and he wanted to play for his hometown team. Well, 26 years later, that lifelong dream is now a reality. He's running to Coach Brooks. You're running around, just keep you a little young too. <clears throat> to stay young. Yeah, no, I'm hurting like hell right now, but I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> Illinois stole your basketball coach, yeah. so you still came and, and showed love. That was that was pretty cool. Just, just hugged his neck yesterday, him and his wife, sweet people. And the Bulls haven't made anything easy for themselves this season, playing down to their competition, just like they did in Brooklyn on Saturday against the Nets. But right now it's simple. Win their final two games of the season here at home, and they're in the playoffs. Ready? Go. Hey Chicago, what do you say? Cubs are gonna win today. Look at them having fun, and they get the party finally, like it's 1908. And now, sports with Louis Del Rio. Wild card weekend wrapping up. Two games today. We'll start with the late game. The Packers hosting the Giants, and all week the talk was about the Giants and that Miami boat trip. But you know, it's Aaron Rodgers who's cruising into the playoffs. 18 touchdowns, zero interceptions in his last seven games. So which way would the tide flow? To the frozen tundra, the G-Men receivers feeling the effects of that boat trip early. First, Odell Beckham Jr., he drops a TD pass here. Then a minute later, Sterling Shepard, he'll drop six points. I guess their hands are a little slippery from that suntan lotion. Well, New York was moving the ball all half, but just two field goals to show for it, and he can't do that against A-Rod because he can do this. Look at this man dancing with the stars. He'll find Devontae Adams in the corner of the end zone. And then six seconds to go in the half. He can't do it again, can he? 50 yards out. This man always has his prayers answered. That Hail Mary last year against the Cardinals. Olivia Munn and now this throw up 
to Randall Cobb. Falls right into his hands in the back of the end zone, and I guess you can say then that just took the wind out of the giant sails because it was Green Bay, all Green Bay in the second half, and all Rodgers and Cobb late in the third. Here for their second TD, 21-13 Green Bay, and then midway through the fourth, the hat trick. A 20-yard touchdown connection makes it 31-13. Rodgers finishes with 362 yards and four touchdowns, and the Packers steamroll the Giants 38-13. It's unfortunate. All right, I, I promise I'm done with the boat jokes, but I'm not done with Miami because the Dolphins were in Pittsburgh today. AFC wild card game. The Finns dominated the Steelers back in week six, but right now it's a whole different world. Ryan Tannehill is out for the year, and the Steelers are finally healthy. And it showed right away to Heinz Field. You know, the Killer Bees have all never played in the same playoff game together. Big Ben, Le'Veon Bell, and Antonio Brown. Well, today we found out what we've been missing early on. First drive, Big Ben finds Brown 50 yards to the house. That makes it 7-0. The next possession, the same two connect. Zero to 100 real quick. Another 50-yard hookup. Brown finished with 124 yards. It was 14-0 before he could even find the dip. And then that third member, the Killer Bees, he was buzzing all around the Dolphins' defense. Incredible performance. He gets to the one-yard line here. Then he'll punch it in. So Pitt was up 20-6. to six. At the half and then the third quarter, the bell was ringing again. The patience and the burst of this man, just a work of art. Two touchdowns on the day. Then check out, just check out the patience here. Oh, not many people can do that. He had 167 yards. Steelers all-time single game rushing record. Not even Ace Ventura can save the Dolphins in this one. The Steelers roll past the Finns 30 to 12. All right, the divisional round is set. All right, now to hoops. Assembly Hall has been a house of horrors for the Illini. They haven't won there recently, and they haven't really won there historically. And it continued again on Saturday. Another nightmarish game that will haunt the orange and blue to the haunted house in Bloomington. The Illini were seeing ghosts early. Indiana began the game on a 15-0 run. The Illini didn't score a basket until six minutes into the game, and then they just could never recover here. Devontae Green from the corner. The Illini were down 19 at the half, trying to make a comeback. And this guy doing whatever he can, Malcolm Hill, he had a team high, 21 points. And with this next basket here, he moves into 10th place on the Illinois all-time scoring list. But that was really the only positive because the Hoosiers would be too much late in the game. A three-pointer here. And then OG Ananobi all the way from Pawnee. Indiana goes on to win 96-80. to Two Big Ten road games for the Illini. Two double-digit losses. I told the guys in the locker room we had to make some changes. So. And now some good news, at least for the Illini. They're back home this week. And finally, to the United Center, the Blackhawks hosting Nashville. Scoreless in the first. Not anymore. Artemi Panarin, the bread man. Check this out. The bread man as quick as Jimmy Johns with that one-timer. His ninth slap shot goal of the year. Then one of the most unnatural, natural hat tricks. Tied at two. The puck goes off Ryan Hartman's arm and into the net. So he's credited with the goal. And then he would score the next two goals on empty netters. Three straight goals, probably not the way he envisioned it, but it still counts, and so does the win. The Hawks get the win at home 5-2. to two. They've now won three straight.